Hi, I'm Steve. Uh, many of you know me as the engineer manager for PowerShell. I'd like to introduce someone I've worked with very closely. He's one of the key decision makers on the .NET team. Yeah, I'm Rich Lander. I'm a program manager on the .NET team. Yeah, so we've been, we've been doing a thing for a while now. Yeah, I think over the last two years, we've had a lot of good collaboration between our two teams. Yeah. Um, one of the things that stands out in my mind initially is really the uh, global tool, mm -hmm. installing PowerShell via .NET uh, CLI. Um, if I recall correctly, I think there was a lot of community requests uh, because they're doing uh, C-sharp development for both Windows and Linux. Like, how can they have a single scripting language and not do like Bash on Linux, PowerShell on Windows? Um, and or even worse, CMD on Windows. Yeah, that would be, that would be <laughs> worse. Um, and now, you know, you can actually install PowerShell if you don't have it already via .NET CLI, al along with other tools. Yeah, so I actually have been doing that. Uh, it's super nice because, uh, like, even on Windows, don't have to run the MSI. I just type, you know, .NET tool, install uh, PowerShell, and then if I want um, the current version, I type like, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's like 7.00-RC2 yes, or something that's correct. pretty close to that. And then uh, actually I installed the RC1 version first, and then there's an update verb that allows you to update it, and it all worked, and I don't have to worry about anything. Yep. And I think also in addition to that, like having PowerShell now as a default in some of the SDK images uh, for C Sharp actually makes it even easier so that if you do like your testing and deployments, you can just have, again, a single PowerShell script. Yeah, so that's actually the one where we got the most customer feedback. Um, you know, my, my management team was saying like, Rich, why, tell me why we're doing this. And I said, it is literally the number one upvoted issue on our um, .NET Docker repository. And then they said, oh, okay, I, I guess that's a thing we should go do. So what we did is we have these SDK images that we produce for, mm -hmm. for Docker, obviously, Docker usage. And um, we worked with your team, yep. and they PR'd in, a, in a, uh, an addition to our Docker file, which pulls PowerShell off of blob storage. Actually, or does it install it as a global tool? I can't actually remember. It might have changed since we published as a global tool. So okay, it probably yeah. goes as a global tool. Originally, now. it was pulling a tarball down. Yep. Um, and uh, we don't actually have any like data on how much that's used, but I imagine a fair bit. Yeah. Uh, also, we've done a lot, a lot of work together on performance. Yes. So we, um, over the last couple of releases, we've put a fair bit of effort into startup performance. Yep. And so we built this feature called um, um, tiered compilation. Good gosh, <laughs> um, tiered compilation, and um, you know we tried to make it the default, and we couldn't at first because it wasn't quite working correctly. And we worked with your team yep. as kind of one of our guinea pigs. Yes, and I think you guys actually enabled it by default as part of your adoption of our two one release. That's correct. And then we worked with you again in 3.0 because we took another kind of hard run at that. Yep. Um, you know, it's, when, when we do something like that, it's basically, let's get, you know, six or 10 or 20, whatever the right number is, test cases, and PowerShell was one of them. Yeah. Let's run this thing in a bunch of different configurations, um, get the data, look at it, see if we're happy. If we're not happy, go do more work, more experiments. And so your team was absolutely probably the team we worked with the closest to yeah. kind of land that and then it's all on in 3.0 and it's all good. Yeah, it's been very beneficial to our users. I think the yeah. there's still more performance improvements for startup that we have to do ourselves, yeah. but I think that really helped a lot. Yes, well I think um, we have more startup performance work that we're doing in Dyna 5. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so pretty soon we should start engaging on that again. Yes. But um, yeah, hopefully we can make PowerShell startup faster. Absolutely. We're definitely planning on moving to .NET 5 for uh, PowerShell 7.1. Uh, and hopefully we'll leverage a lot of other changes that are happening in .NET 5 as well. Yeah, so those previews will start up again, um, you know, and definitely in the first half of this year, probably the first quarter. And, um, you know, so as much as possible, it'd be great if we could, and this is obviously not a, a, an announcement, yes. but uh, it'd be great, you know, we'll, we'll ship a preview like every month once they start, and be great if PowerShell previews were super close to that, so people could yeah. just um, adopt them, and then give us both feedback at the same time. Absolutely. In fact, one of the changes I want to make in 7.1 is that I want to be able to ship maybe a week or two after .NET 5 GA versus yeah. a month or two after. Yeah, I, I support that. And, uh, uh, so we'll have, to, we'll have to work closely on that to see how we can align our work. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, fortunately, your dependencies are actually relatively low into our stack. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you don't 
depend on ASP.NET or WPF and my team, the runtime team, we, um, we shut down earlier yeah. than everyone else to give um, the rest of the teams like a, you know, a stable surface area to build on yep. top of, so that should help. Yeah, I think it'll also help because we're aligning with the .NET release cycle, so mm -hmm. we actually have a one-year release versus a six-month release. Yeah. So we can give you that feedback early so you can uh, adjust for it as needed. Yeah, I mean, I think that's um, one interesting thing to put some emphasis on is clearly we're collaborating a lot technically. Yeah. You know, feature-wise, you know, we are both trying to build features for you, but you're also giving us a ton of feedback back to make the general product better. But we're kind of collaborating, I guess you would say, business-wise yes. in the sense of trying to align schedules, support policies, and that kind of thing yep. so that it's like totally the better together plan. Exactly. And it's going to be much easier for customers. Yeah. Right. So you and I know how awesome all the work is that we've done together, mm -hmm. but you know, where can the folks at home go and grab PowerShell, whether it's by Global Tool, Docker Image, or something else? Yeah, you can get more information from our blog, aka.msps blog. And thanks, Richard, for joining me on this uh, show. No problem. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Until next time.